Okay, if you read through the scenario, you will have to find out what are my functional and non-functional requirements. This is the first thing you do. Secondly, you do requirements modeling. You find out for each process what are the inputs, what are the outputs, what, are the, what is the performance, who will execute each process. And then you create your use cases and activity diagrams which, you, which we have already done. Now for DFDs, for each process, there is a data flow. Uh, remember, each diagram has a different purpose. For use case, it is showing us who is executing a certain process. This is what use case does. And what process is included in, in payment process. For example, in payment, you will see there are certain processes included already. Let's look at my use case, this one, payment. In bin, bill payment process, what is included and what is extend? So you will see send SMS is included. Whenever there's a bill payment, send SMS will always happen. Whenever there's a bill payment, sometimes you will receive, sometimes you will receive. So this is what the use case diagram addresses. And this is why we need use case diagram. Activity diagram will tell you step by step process flow. What happens, when is the decision taken, what kind of decisions can be taken, the flow, the step by step. If yes, then what happens, if no, then what happens. So this is activity diagram of registration. This is the most simple diagram. There is no decision over here. But it tells step by step what does the customer do and what does the billing payment do. So you see the difference between use case and activity diagram. This is now step by step approach. Even the merge account you see, what does the registered customer do and what does the e-billing system do in the merge use case. Where is the merge use case coming from? Here. So see, this is my merge use case. And for each use case, you create an activity diagram. So this is my merge use case and this is my merge activity diagram. Each person involved, each entity involved, what do they do? Okay, so let's look at my similarly bill payment. There is a bill payment activity diagram also in another file I've placed. So you can place in one also, it's, it doesn't matter. So this is my payment activity diagram for the bill payment use case. This also tells me separately, step by step, what does the registered customer do and what does the e-billing system do? Similarly, data flow diagram also has a very different purpose. DFD, create my context diagram. Now before context diagram, uh, if you see from your notes, there is something called functional decomposition diagram which is the most basic diagram, functional decomposition. Let's draw this and then move forward one by one. This is my uh, functional decomposition diagram. I hope this is the one. We had a look at it before. No, it's not here. Yeah. Functional decomposition diagram, we've seen this before. Let me remind this to you. This is my functional de decomposition diagram for patient management system. Remember we looked at patient management system. There is registration, there is treatment, there is billing and below them. You simply write down the names of the processes in a functional decomposition diagram. You don't mention who works on each process. You see, in this diagram, can you see who does the registration? A customer, or customer services advisor, or the doctor, or the customer's father. You don't know. Who does the billing, you don't know. So this is the most, one of the most simplest diagrams we will work on. It only lists down in a hierarchy all the processes. That's all. Who does it? Does this step-by-step -step process, decisions? No, nothing. Only the names of the processes. That's all. So far... Our online billing system, for our online billing system, let's see how can I create 
a functional decomposition diagram okay functional decomposition diagram for this what you have to do uh, you can actually create this through many stencils but let's start with uh, DFD if you don't have DFD open see this is how you can open let me close all of these and I will show you how to open a stencil so if you don't find a specific shape or a specific stencil go to more shapes software and database software and I am going to open now a DFD metrics or US units whatever you use it does not matter both of them are same okay for creating a functional decomposition diagram I will use entity 1 so I'm telling you what options you have this is you see this entity 1 and another one is this external interactor you can use these any of these okay let me use entity 1 this is my online billing system so I create my top system the top system at the top uh, my main system this is online or e-billing whatever you want to call it billing system below this look at the scenario what options do I have uh, from by reading this I find out I have registration process then I have bill payments process then I have a view history process okay so let's simply connect the, these together drag and drop more of these okay and have a dynamic connector connect them it is at the bottom dynamic connector over here pick it up and connect them with all of these one by one and notice when only the end point is red you should drop it over there because only then it will glue to the shape you see now this is a, I can drop it over here but it is not glued see now I will move it and it, it does not move with it only when it becomes red it becomes glued to it you know glue stick it will stick to it now when I move it it will stick to it so only when it becomes red square when you see it just drop it over there okay so I am gonna create one more and I'm going to glue this to this process also and I will write the name this is what the registration so I do online registration secondly I have my bill payment process and what else view history below view bill payment they can be send SMS okay so I come down and I write over here send SMS and below registration can there be send SMS no. yes so you do that again you have a send SMS and you connect them to the parent ones okay what else read the scenario anything missing over here let's see the scenario customers can add multiple accounts to their single email so this is my merge account so I also write the process merge account okay so drag this and place over here give it merge account if you don't know what is merge account or if you don't remember this word you can also write add account it's okay so what it does is in one email many many physical addresses of the etisalat is added so this is merge account and I simply do the connections okay and now this should be finished save it now you know how to create functional decomposition diagram my main system at the top all the processes below this and simply connect them no labels necessary no description over here what does it do how does it do steps decisions no nothing no swim lanes okay
so this is my functional decomposition diagram let's move on now to context diagram but before that do you have any questions in this FDD uh, let me add this over here FDD is also created by the same concept FDD this is my functional decomposition diagram By, by the same visual stencil, you can create four diagram. Any confusion over here? No? Shall I move forward? Okay. Now, you remember you have written down all the processes over here? In context diagram, you don't, know, you don't do anything like that. You only create one central process, which is your system, and you write down what are the external entities and you draw the connection between them. Let me do that. I don't need my use case stencil anymore, so I'm closing it. I only need my context diagram. So this is my context diagram. Pick up this overall process. At the bottom, there is overall, overall process. Place over here. And this process carries the name of my system, which is online billing system and in the context diagram you show everything is inside this registration bill payment view history everything is inside this we don't draw more diagrams more shapes representing those processes again what you do draw over here is the external entities what is the external entity over here who is who is outside the system a customer a customer is doing a registration, a customer is doing bill payment, a customer is doing view history. So how is the system interacting with the customer? What is the entity over here? A customer. And there is one more entity over here, which is called a registered customer. Okay. And there is one more entity. So this is my system. You know entity, what is entity? It's a noun. Any entity is a noun, name, place, animal, or thing. If you have any hesitation, you have any doubts, open the scenario. This is my scenario and you read through this. Utility bills payment system. This is my main system, this one, utility bills payment system. Etisalat is a telecom company. So Etisalat becomes an entity. So it has to come down over here and you write down it is a lot the company okay i've deleted the diagrams i had already because they were incomplete so i'm creating complete diagrams now with you so it is a lot you read the like this is it is a lot of the telecom company which has over 1 million subscribers you see now subscriber is an entity also so you guys know what is a noun, right? Mm. So you drag and drop subscriber over here. So the easiest way is to read through the scenario. You will find out the nouns. You drag and drop the nouns over here. Okay. The company provides telephone, internet, and TV services to its customers. So these are services. Bill is generated monthly for all account and payment is also collected monthly via different channels including one bill payment now what is bill can anybody tell me can i write bill over here because bill is not external bill is part of the system customer is external outside the system the registered customer is outside the system subscriber is also a, a customer okay and it is a lot is a company a company it has many systems it has HR, it has advertisement, advertisement system, it has billing system, it has many systems. So you write down the company over here also. But bill, even though it is a noun, but it is inside this. We don't write bill as a different entity. Out of convenience, 90% of registered customers, you've already written this, registered customer, prefer to pay online bills. Customers, we've already done this also written down customers 
required to first register to the e-billing portal so by providing Etisalat account number e-billing portal is the name of the system same e-billing system email addresses and password registered customers I've already covered this can view the latest and old bills history why don't I include the view and pay yes, view and yeah you see this view the latest old bills register pay bills these are all processes they are not nouns so I will do this later on when I start creating my functional or and non-functional requirements or I have already done this before when I write down the functional and non-functional requirements so now I am only looking for external entities which are nouns so view payment history pay monthly bills through visa card upon successful payment a confirmation SMS is sent to registered mobile number of the customer I have already written this down I have already written this down also it sell out accounts to their single email <coughs> etc etc need to be paid by the same customer if payment is not received from account holders for two months the service gets blocked so yeah I'm finished so this is my all nouns my, this is my central system customer registered customer subscriber it is a lot now tell me you read through the system all the data flows because these three di diagrams these three diagrams context diagram, and one, they are about data flows they are about data flow you, you know what that means where is the data starting from where is it going where is it coming back where is it flowing you know flowing going coming back this is the flow of data which we are showing over here so in this scenario the data starts from customer a customer when you know remember when he wants to do registration he gives his mobile number he gives his it is a lot bill ID account ID his his name his email so that is data that data starts from here and goes here agree the data of the customer it starts from here and ends here in the online billing system yes <clears throat> and the online billing system sends back the confirmation and the SMS to the customer for payment the registered customer starts to send data which is his visa card details his own account details the, the amount of money he is sending which is also data he starts sending from here to the online billing system the online billing system sends back uh, uh, invoice or SMS to the registered customer right from the scenario it is a lot and subscriber the data is not flowing between them okay you agree do you find any process over here any data flow between subscriber in the scenario do you find any any data flow from subscriber to the online billing system there is no data flow there is nothing subscriber is doing it is just mentioned over here you see subscriber it's just mentioned over here once it's not there anywhere so even though it is an entity it is not participating in my DFT in my system select this delete this. no need for this it is a lot <coughs> for online billing system is there any participation mentioned in the scenario from it is a lot can you find out it is mentioned over here this is a lot account number it is a lot telecom company okay we found out it's an entity but what does it do in the system account number account 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 this is account etc it is inside this system it is a lot also does not do anything in the system they have created the system and khalas it is now independent we delete this also this is how you find out your uh, entities and then you find out what is the data flowing between them if there is no data there is no need to write them but the data is flowing between customer and registered customer so you create a dynamic connector from here and you place it over here also 
okay so now the correct shape to use for this for this relationship is this one but it is a little bit difficult for the students to snap you know it takes a little bit more time especially when you are in the case analysis exam you need more time to concentrate on the work instead of creating the shapes so it is a little bit difficult so we have disregarded this so you can actually use this dynamic connector only but make sure you mention what kind of data is being flown so so you what you have shown over here is there is some connection between them but what is it so the customer you double click this and you write registration details okay and if it is very you see this is the the font is very big you can se select this and make it smaller okay because i've zoomed in 200% so it looks very very big for me so i have my registration details what does it show me the customer sends the registration details to the online billing system and then the online billing system also does something sends back confirmation to this guy yes so you do this connection and you write over here confirmation now there is something you can do with this this arrow to make it a little bit more pleasant pleasant looking is you right click it make it a curved connect connector if it is not looking very fine or you can use a right angled connector if you think the shape is not looking very pleasant and then the online billing system sends something to the registered customer also but first the registered customer pay bills yes and what does it send back it, it should send back the payment receipt right you come back over here and connect this payment receipt let me connect this here and connect this here you can use the arrows as you want as long as they show the purpose okay so in a context diagram you see the overall picture the customer he sends registration details the billing system sends back information the, cus the registered customer pays bill and the online billing system sends back payment receipt this is a very high level view okay so one of the <coughs> one of the important thing to consider over here is there is no details the context diagram shows the interaction between the system and the external entities the external entities are customer and registered customer and the interaction between the billing system is what is the purpose of the system billing so he, the customer registered registers and the registered customer pays bill and the system sends back payment receipt that's all so we don't go into the details of merge account view history okay send sms we don't go into that detail because this context diagram is a overall view of the system what does it do all right is there any question or confusion isra any question or confusion so
so there is no detailed analysis over here that I'm doing there is no more shapes it's only one process which shows my system and the communication between external entities all right so there's no there's no confusion anymore okay let's move forward to dfd level 0 and then in this in this dfd level 0 now i create each process through which the data is passing through so again come back to the dfd diagram this is my my dfd level 0 come back to the dfd diagram now you start creating the data process what is my process how will i see these are my processes look all of these are my process registration the functional ones are registration payment collection block service add multiple accounts or merge account this is my functional requirements they translate into the diagrams as processes non-functional diagram uh, requirements also they translate into a diagram of visual as processes okay let's create us the basic structure of dfd we should be able to do this in five minutes then you can go in a for a 10 minutes break so this is my first process and I give it a number always 1.0 registration showing that this is the first thing that happens in the system registration and then drag the data process again as I'm doing now place it over here 2.0 build payment okay another drag the third process now <clears throat> excuse me yes what was that yes add account or merge account both are same thing what else say again please yes exactly view history For your practical case analysis, don't draw the NFR, the non-functional requirements, because it will be too much. But as long as you identify the non-functional requirements, it is okay. But drawing this DF in the DFD will be you know, a little bit more time consuming. And you will have three hours for this. For the whole practical case analysis, you will have three hours. Okay. So I have these four written down I can add more which is block service also for functional requirements I have one more 1.0 block service okay so I have my processes written down go back to the context diagram see this is my entities customer and registered customer you have to copy these over there same entity should be over there in dfd also so this is my dfd copy the external entities and paste over here customer and registered customer <coughs> got this and now I create the data flow between them what data flows between this process and the customer what data flows between bill payment and the registered customer or if any from bill payment to customer add account so what is the data flow between them this I mention over here so you start with the dynamic connector create connection customer registration what is this data
account and registration details and this guy the registration process also sends something back you know what that is online account it can be confirmation you can write confirmation which we used before and what anything else sms so the customer for registration process he sends to this process what the account details of his address and the registration details of his online billing this guy sends back that you confirmation you are now registered customer and an sms anything else between the customer and registration anything else between the customer and bill payment anything else between the customer and our ad account you go the scenario and see if you have any confusion you can go to the scenario read through again and see what are the communication between them there is nothing apart from registration there is nothing that this guy does over here now comes this registered customer everything now the data flow between bill payment ad account view history block service is data flow between registered customer and these processes okay agreed any question so far so you see this data flow diagram is now from the aspect of data flow between processes and the entities activity diagram was step by step and also decisions if he selects this then what happens what does the system do if the system does this then what happens what the customer does and the use case were also separate purpose so all of these diagrams they have separate purpose okay so let's stop over here take 10 minutes break and i'll see you guys in 10 minutes right uh let's move forward complete the bill payment process now you see there is no communication between these processes and this entity customer there is no communication between the customer and these processes so we leave this there and let's adjust this in the center so that we know these processes are communicating with the registered customer and okay let's start creating the connection between them okay after this one of you will come and you will draw a diagram like this but let's complete this together uh what is the communication between the registered customer and bill payment what kind of data flows from registered customer and bill payment process it is this is my main process can any yes the diagram that you have can you please please delete this that because it has this connection this is difficult for you to make so this one is a easier one this one so we will be using this one so the diagram those are incomplete also can you please delete them and see what we are doing now you can Sorry, say again. Yes, 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 yes. The payment is from registered customer only. The payment is not from the customer. From the customer only, there is always registration. 
and from registered customer the bill payment process what does it get the visa card and and bill details and and account and what does the bill payment process send back what does the bill payment process send back can anybody suggest what does the bill payment process send back what data hmm the receipt yes the payment receipt and sms payment receipt and sms is sent back from now from add account you know this is my merge account scenario in which there is an additional account added to the existing online billing account let me zoom this because some of you are wanting to see this closely and the board is a little bit more it looks smaller on the board okay from add account what does the registered customer and the process what kind of data do they exchange do they is there any data sent back and forth between them registered customer to add account what he's doing is he wants to add a new account for his office or another home in maybe ajman or sharda he has another home for that second home he wants to add a new account in the same email so what does he do he enters the new etisalat id or a new etisalat account customer number whatever so he is actually adding the new etisalat customer id in the same online billing portal so he can later on pay from the from one login okay what does he send back what does this process send back to registered customer so the registered customer sends the new etisalat id anything this this guy sends back confirmation and sms okay not not new account not new online account this is the same online account you see i saw did i show this to you before we'll check back on this later on see what happens is i have a login register to my register to my address my home address and i can pay the bill but i want to add one more address with this is called add account so that one new address is the new etisalat id not online billing id but the new etisalat you know the outside your home there is a etisalat customer number that that id let me rename this maybe that will customer number and he will send back to you the confirmation sms that yes you are now registered with us your account is now merged okay so this is the difference any other confirmation uh, communication between add account and registered customer Attach over here so it looks looks a little better. Okay. Any other communication between these two? I don't think there is any communication. View history and registered customer. This is my last, uh, not last, second last. I'm sorry. This is my communication between registered customer and view history. so a registered customer can see old or historical payments or payment history all right so since this guy is already logged in over here there is no more data flowing 
from registered customer to view history only a view history process is showing him back the historical payments for block service now remember this remember this blocking of service is a process it's a functional requirement but how does this happen does a customer have to do anything over here block service no. automatically it is blocked who does it the system does it now remember the system is actually blocking because it does not receive payment the online billing is one way of receiving payment the customer can go by cash he can make the payment he can do the payment to the SSLR office and that will pay his bills so his cash bills can also be accepted but that is out of the scope of the system similarly blocking service it is allowed they did not receive the bill so they will block the service it is out of the scope of the system so online billing system will not do anything in the online billing is only collecting payment sending back information okay so block service is a requirement but it is not a part of online billing system even though you have written this down there is no need for it in dfd so we remove this from here you understand why we remove this block see this is it is allowed they are doing this the online billing system has no control or authority to do this all right d and we call it dfd level 1 so this is the last diagram for the scenario i'm creating for you and after this you guys will come here and create this however this is relatively simpler from this so i am doing this for first process see so we need to create four dfd level 1 now so let's create number 1 dfd level 1 let me give it a name this is for registration okay so for registration what you do again in place the process over here this is my process registration this is my registration process and an entity the registration process does not do anything with the registered customer only customer and you show more details over here what kind of details let's see so my customer sends this um, customer number login registration Done completely. Registration email password. This is what he sent, and he gets back active account confirmation. And SMS. Okay. Anything else he can do over here? So now, typically, this is the most simplest thing, and you don't see any difference between here and here. Confirmation of SMS, account and registration details. You have more details over here. What kind of account? It is a lot customer number, registered email, and password. typically there are more details over here 
and there is more process involved there because this is the most simplest there is nothing else so this is my dfd level 1 okay in some scenarios in the registration you also uh, okay we'll we'll cover this later on let's keep this very simple so this is my dfd level 1 complete for registration dfd level 1 now for what payment for payment what i will do okay one thing i may have not done over here this is the registration you give it the same number 1.0 okay now over here let me do this also i want to show you something this is my sorry, data process and this is called sorry one second okay now because this dfd uh, from dfd level 1 you see there is a bill payment and this this is the overall you go back to the use case and see what was it involving the bill payment it, there was payment rejected there was view history there was send sms there is login there is bill payment this is what the bill payment consists of correct this is what bill payment consists of this is the whole bill payment use case right so from this bill payment use case you have to take all the use cases which are there for use cases for, for uses or includes login send sms bill payment these three ones all use cases the one which are used includes so i will include them over here in dfd level 1 for my payment and i will write this like this 2.1 bill payment what other things is involved over here 2.2 any other process involved over here you see there is login also so the first thing you will do over here is login 2.1 should be login the second is bill payment and the third process is send confirmation or send sms send receipt and sms so this is my third process within this main process so let me zoom in and so you can see this now within bill payment i have three sub processes number 1 i have to log in then i have to do bill payment then i have to then what the system does is another process send receipt and sms and this is also done between the registered customer only drag this place over here registered customer and then you show what happens between these two so the payment process is complete in the dfd level 1 with more detail so registered customer sends login details <coughs> the login process 
logs him in successfully so you can write login and login success and show bills due for bill payment what does the system do and what does the customer do the registered customer he sends payment amount and visa card details this is we send payment amount and visa card details you can remove this obviously because it is sending payment amount and visa card details the registered customer sends to the bill payment what does the bill payment send back the process the bill payment process number is 2.2 he sends back to him the registered customer the invoice and sms or receipt payment receipt and sms all right now this is another uh, process payment send receipt and sms 2.3 the bill payment sends back to him confirmation email and after that this is what happens over here the receipt of payment and sms is sent back by this process so we have drilled down to the payment process we have three steps over here number 1 2.1 login number 2 bill payment and number 3 send receipt the confirmation as uh, payment receipt and sms so notice for this process the customer does not send him anything the customer sends this guy something but then the system at the step 3 sends back the receipt of payment and sms okay so the so the process of payment is divided in three steps now number 1 you have to log in what the customer sends him what does he get, get back then bill payment number 2.2 what the customer sends to this process and what, what does he get back n 2.3 send customer and receipt if there is anything the customer sends to this process you mention over here and then what does he get back this is the payment dfd level 1 so now i have to create dfd level 1 for add account and view history also add account and view history for payment is there any confusion you guys know what this this diagram do now dft level 1 you divide this into three processes login bill payment and send receive sms and each of them what communication they are having with the customer what data is flowing you know the data flow what kind of data is flowing between the entity and the process you have to write this down this is dfd level 1 you draw this for each process so i want now to draw add account and view history after this my dfd will be finished now 3.1 for add account what you have to do first of all yes 
see there is a merge account scenario registration bill payment the merge account is see where it is okay this is my merge account the merge account also has login so it is not absolutely necessary but it is also good to have login over here if you have not then it is also okay but now let's create my these diagrams for add account what happens at number 1 if you want to add a new account so you uh, you have to log in and <clears throat> then you have to give add new account number at number 3 you have 3.3 you have send sms and payment receipt this is what happens between these three steps happens between the registered customer and the system okay let us see what happens here So you can copy the same details. Login success. Login details. Login success and show the receipt. Login details. Login <coughs> success. New. It is allowed. account number and he passes this information to the add new to salat account number process which is 3.2 and then what he gets back is also confirmation this has been added and then this is email confirmation or so this confirmation can be on email or interface and then a uh, sms is being sent back for confirmation so you there's no payment received over here yeah sorry so this is the third step which happens this is my add account okay this is my add account dfd level 1 for view history for view history again you add the same entity over here and the data process registered customer 4.1 login and 4.2 
login details any sense back login success view history so if you want to view history you you select dates like three months history six months history how much history uh, so the registered customer would send him back would request for history date means three months or six months or seven months and then this guy will get back from the view history the historical bills and there's no need for any sms etc so this is the two step process of view history only